Yeah, so just to highlight a couple of things here regarding the sulfur, uh, NAC, glutathione. Glutathione is a tripeptide anyway. So that's made from glutamine, glycine, cysteine, right? Taurine, um, MSM, alpha lipoic acid. Just getting a lot of our sulfur nutrients on board is going to be huge. That's going to help provide a lot of the building blocks for phase two. And that way we're going to be able to, you know, and acetylation, glutathione conjugation, methylation, right? These are going to involve a lot of our phase two nutrients and some of the phase one, like methylation will evolve like B12 and folate, right? So we want to make sure all those things are working if we need. Now, some people, we're not going to be pushing detoxification directly. We're going to just be, a, it's going to be there more to help pick up the dead debris from things that are being killed in the gut. But if the activated charcoal is still not enough, we may have to push more of those phase one and phase two, just to make sure those toxins are releasing. And then the binders will be there to catch things a little bit as well. So a little bit of a push catch if necessary. If not, we'll just be doing more of a catch and the push will be more from the killing side. So everyone's a little bit different. And I tend to, a lot of times this isn't a problem when you have the foundation built in first. Yeah. The funny thing is going into this podcast, I thought, oh, wow, this will be you know, pretty easy to explain. But the more we dive into it, the more this thing gets a little tricky and so case specific, because some people, they don't tolerate upregulating phase two that much. And other people, they have trouble with the binders. So we try to make this stuff as simple as we can. But keep in mind, people, this is not this podcast is not designed to replace one on one functional medicine care. So if you really want to get to the bottom of these issues, you need help, you need us to help guide you through this, because I don't want you going and just popping a bunch of charcoal and you feel bad, and you don't know why, and then you're confused about what you're going to do next. 100%. So let's talk about some binders. So activated charcoal, you mentioned the heating like that, the, you know, the, which is going to really have a, a big binding effect. It's also going to help with mold as well. Uh, we have things like bamboo, bamboo binders uh, are, are excellent as well. We have things like citrus pectin, which are shown to be very helpful for lead. We have zeolite binders, which are very helpful for mold. I think activated charcoal is also very helpful for mold. Uh, we have things like beetroot powder, which has some natural binding effects for mold as well. Obviously, we have the, the medication uh, cholestyramine, which is a really good mold binder. There's some side effects, though, which can lower your sex hormones. Um, fulvic minerals, which have some mold and, and some binding effects too. A any comments on the different kinds of binders, Evan? Oh, chlor chlorella, more on the metal side, more for mercury though, more in the intestinal tract. Anything else? Yeah, the cholestyramine is strong stuff. I used it mm -hmm. and man, I tell you, it works, but I do believe that it affected my gut negatively. I do believe that. Now, I don't know if, I don't know if that's a direct influence? Or was it a byproduct of dragging mycotoxins out of the system? I'm not too sure. But I would try to tell people, don't use the prescription binder unless you absolutely have to and you're just so miserable, you can't get yourself out of the rabbit hole with it. Because for it's me, not necessary for most. Yeah, for me, I just I really struggled. And I was doing the natural binders for months. And I needed a little extra help. So I did it short term. Uh, but I would try to stray most people away. The natural binders can be really good if you have enough patience and time to resolve the issues. And you've like, for you, it's more of a mold thing. So we're kind of talking for binders for most people is more on the killing side, right? So for that, you had no problems with it, right? It was more on the mold side, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then you find you for on the mold binding side, you found that it was just better for you when you had what more glutathione and more sulfur support in along with the binders. Was that true? Yeah, yeah, the glutathione definitely helped as long as I didn't do too much. And then also helping the glucuronidation pathway. That's also part of this whole conversation. And so calcium d glucurate did great things for me as yes, well. Yes, calcium d glucurate is good. And that's a estrogen binder as well as a mold binder. Yeah, yeah, it really helps with Z, what's called zearilinone, which is something we test yeah, for on the on. urine. So, you know, like we've talked about today, you can have a kind of a broad spectrum approach, but we really try to dial it in if we can. If we see specific mycotoxins, we'll try to get a little more specific. 100%.